everybody, it's Kira from KiraWilliamsFitness.com and today I am going to be sharing with you how I lost 10 pounds in 14 weeks. Um, back in June, so actually it started kind of before, um, the whole beginning of this year, the first six months of this year, I was traveling like crazy. Um, I was going on about a trip a month. Um, we went to Arizona, we went to Dallas, we went to New Orleans, we went to, we went skiing and went to Denver. Um, just going all these fun places. And honestly, like that's how I want to live. I love traveling. And when I travel, I eat and drink freely and I would not change anything in the world about that. But, I knew that for the summer I was going to be home for a little while. I don't really like doing much during the summer. It's so hot and gross in Florida. So I was like, you know what? This is perfect timing. I am, I'm not really comfortable. Um, I wanted to, I just wanted to lose some fat and I wanted to, um, be really intentional about what I was eating and drinking and how I was training and just feel better. So I never sought out to lose weight. I don't care about the scale. Um, the only reason that I knew what my weight was in the beginning was because I needed to do some calculations to determine what um, my total daily energy expenditure was. So um, I could figure out how much to eat. So what you do, and I do this with all of my clients, when you first start out, um, you need to know how many calories you burn in a day. And there's some really great online calculators. I have them on my website. If you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube or listening as a podcast, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to send that to you. You can always Google how many calories do I burn in a day, Kira Williams Fitness, and that's going to walk you through this calculation. So, um, you get your, your base metabolic rate based on, and that's going to be based on your age, your gender, um, and your height, your weight. And then you, that's going to be like your base metabolic rate. Mine's I think around like 12 or 1300 maybe, but then you layer in all of your daily activities that you know, that could be the steps that you take. It could be how, you know, how, if you sit a lot at work or if you, you know, have a job where you're getting a lot of steps in, um, it includes, you know, your actual workouts. Like it includes all of that stuff. And so my total daily energy expenditure is around 2,400, I think. So, um, so I had to, in order to get that, to get those calculations, I had to know my weight. So I weighed myself, um, and I weighed 135 pounds. And, um, so anyway, I got my calculations and I would put myself in a calorie deficit because at the end of the day, unless you have any major medical stuff going on or metabolic stuff or, um, hormonal stuff. Being in a calorie deficit is the way to lose weight, period. So, um, so I got myself into a deficit, but I'm really protective over my Saturdays. On Saturdays, um, Tyler and I might go out to a brewery. Um, now that it's college football, we will go out and we'll have wings. Um, it was just Oktoberfest, so I was, you know, going out for German food on Saturdays. Um, I love margaritas. So I'm very protective of, over my Saturdays, and I did not, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to touch my Saturdays. Like, I don't eat crappy but those calories add up quickly. So, um, so what I did was for two Saturdays, and this is like going back into like earlier in June, um, the calorie deficit really didn't start until late June, but I needed to do my research and figure all of this stuff out. So in early mid June, I tracked to the best of my ability on Saturdays, 
obviously I, it can't be perfect. Um, tracking really, there's like, you can be off. Like if you are tracking perfectly, there's still a chance that you're going to be off by 25% in calories and or macros. And this is like, even if you are on my fitness pal and you pick the blue check mark, um, there is still, and you're weighing things to the gram, there's still 25% either way. They've done a bunch of research on it. Um, and so you have to just kind of take that with a grain of salt um, because you know that if you are, you know, over by 25%, there's also a chance that you're going to be under on something by 25%. So we do our best, right? So on for two Saturdays, I did my best and I just put in, you know, like 12 chicken wings, um, 36 ounces of margarita, you know, 36 ounces of margarita, like stuff. So, and then I just did my best. Like when I was at home, you know, have my breakfast and everything, I can track that down to the gram. But when I was like going out for lunch, there's only so much you can do. You put in a Cuban sandwich. Okay, well, there's a generic thing in my fitness pal for a Cuban sandwich and it's 624 calories. So I just, you know, I did my best. So it, I kind of, on both of those occasions, I landed around 3,500 calories. Um, so I said, okay, here's the thing. I am going to just assume that I'm going to eat 3,500 calories on a Saturday because that seems to be how it goes. So what I did, all right, so if I burn 20, if I burn 2,400 calories a day, and that's my maintenance, you multiply that by seven. Um, <laughs> I don't have my calculator, so I don't know. Um, let me open up the calculator on my computer. 2,400 times seven. So I'm burning 16,800 calories in a week, but I want to take out that 3,500. And that leaves me with 13,300 calories, but I have to divide that into six days. And that leaves me with 2,216 calories a day that I can eat to be at maintenance. And that includes having a 3,500 calorie day on Saturdays. So 2,200 calories. But to lose, you have to be in a deficit. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take 400 calories a day. And then that leaves me at about 1,800 calories. So I'm in a 400 calorie deficit every day. I did that. I did that for, I think, a week and a half. And I was dying. I was so hungry. I was tired. I was cranky. I mean, like, like I was like, I would literally be sitting here at my desk in the afternoons. Like, I couldn't concentrate. I was just, I was like drinking seltzer water. I was just like going into the kitchen and, and eating sauerkraut because it was only like 20 calories for like a cup of sauerkraut. So just eating this stuff because I'm like, I, I cannot continue like this. And so I was talking to a girlfriend about it and I was like, I, like, this is, 1800 calories. Like, I feel like that should be good. And she's like, yeah, but you have more muscle on your body than a lot of people who weigh what you weigh and your height, your age, etc." So you really need to take that into consideration. And, you know, I was like, you're absolutely right. This is, I'm, I'm starving. And that's the biggest thing is like when you're getting that biofeedback, you need to listen to your body. And, you know, I thought maybe after like, after a week that my body would kind of get used to it and it did not. So I'm like, all right, let me just bump up. Um, and I bumped up to, I think 1900 or 1950, I think probably 1900. And 
I was like, okay, this is way better. This is way more manageable. And that's where I hung out. Actually, I think I bumped by like 50 calories and that wasn't enough. And then I bumped by another 50 and I got myself to 1900 and I was like, okay, I can, this is like, I'm hungry, but I'm okay. And my body did adjust to that. And like, there were definitely days here and there that I was, that was not enough. And I honored my body. I listened to my body and I had more calories on those days. Like there were a couple days that, um, that I did, you know, hit like 2,100, um, because I was just absolutely starving. Um, so that started at the end of June and then I, we didn't go anywhere in July, August, we went to Detroit and the whole time we were in Detroit, I didn't track. Like I said, if I go places, like I just want to eat and drink freely and, you know, and do my thing. So I didn't track on those days. And then, um, I also got this like really big apple strudel from a bakery. And when I had that apple strudel, that was about four or five days. Um, I couldn't keep within my calorie goal with the apple strudel. Um, because I mean, it's like buttery apple strudel. So it was putting me over my calories and I don't care. Um, it is what it is. So anyway, I lived around 1900 calories. Um, uh, so I was in a 300 calorie a day deficit and like overall, um, and I kept my workouts the same. Um, we'll get a, a little bit more into workouts, but, um, that's what I, that's what I did. But when working with a client and for those of you guys listening, this is where you, you need to pay attention. That's the only, those are that the only thing I changed was my calorie was my calories because the food that I eat is very high quality. And I also focus on high nutrient dense food, whole foods, um, and balancing my blood sugar. So the very first thing that I will do with a client is, yes, we do look at calories, but even before I care about calories, I care where you're getting your calories. Because if you are eating 1800 calories a day and it consists of cheese and crackers, um, coffee drinks from Starbucks, popcorn, wine, um, your kids goldfish snacks, um, ham and cheese sandwiches. I, I've seen all, I've seen this. Um, if that's where you're getting the bulk of your calories, that's the thing that you need to change first. So every single morning for breakfast, I have a protein shake. I put my protein in my coffee. Um, I have oatmeal with berries and some peanut butter. Um, for lunch, I have about two pounds of different vegetables, zucchini, squash, peppers, leeks, mushrooms, etc. Those are all sauteed in olive oil. I have that with some rice and ground turkey breast, ground chicken. Then for dinner, we always do chicken, pork, fish, beef. We always have that with another couple pounds of vegetables and either potatoes or some kind of starch, um, like a, like a grain. So the quality of your food, where your calories are actually coming from needs to be the very first move you make. Um, when you are not eating nutrient dense food, it's going to, you're going to have a lot more cravings that you're going to be fighting yourself on. Um, you are not getting an adequate amount of vitamins and minerals and all of those wonderful nutrients that we can only get through food. Um, I mean, I guess you can supplement, but I don't suggest it, um, for multiple reasons. And that's another podcast for another day. Um, but focusing on eating whole foods, nutrient dense foods, fruits like pomegranate, 
and berries and bananas and apples and starches, starchy carbs like farro and buckwheat or sweet potato or black beans. And then healthy fats like, you know, eating um, all of cooking your food in olive oil, avocado oil, eating actual avocados, having cashews, having um, macadamia nuts, coconut. Um, when you're having meat, you know, doing the high, higher fatty, higher fat meat, like, you know, fatty, fatty steak, like um, this is really great. It has a bunch of amino acids in it and fatty acids in it. That's good for you. Um, cooking your food in, in duck fat, um, grass fed butter, and then having lots of protein, you know, steak, shrimp, chicken, fish, um, plain Greek yogurt, all of these things. And then tons of vegetables, you know, eating the rainbow. Um, Brussels sprouts, Swiss chard, uh, <laughs> peppers, onions, zucchini, summer squash, mushrooms, like all of this stuff. Um, that is where your calories should be coming from. If you're eating processed foods, you are just going to be it's going to be so easy to overeat. It's going to be really hard to be in your deficit. You're not going to feel good. Your gut health is going to be all over the place. Your immune system is going to be down. You're going to be stressing your body out. You're creating more inflammation and you are basically fighting an uphill battle. So that's the first thing that absolutely has to change. I don't even care what your calories are. I care what quality. Quality comes first. Then the second thing that I would say and this kind of goes alongside with quality is making sure that your blood sugar is balanced. Again, this is not something that I had to do because I eat protein at every meal. Like I've just trained myself. In fact, there were there even yesterday, um, I put in all my food into my fitness pal and without even trying, I was at 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. It is hilarious when I go in and I look at my macros that it just always seems to all line up as 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. Now, are those right ratios correct for you? Are those percentages right for you? That depends. Every single person is different. You know, I work with some women who are um, perimenopausal and that is possibly too many carbohydrates for them. I work with some people who are long distance runners and they need way more carbohydrates than that. I work with some folks who um, just don't really feel great eating a lot of carbs and feel better eating more fat. That's not going to be a great ratio for them. And then I work with people who are in an even more significant deficit than I was in, and that's not going to be enough protein. So that varies person to person, but regardless of what your macronutrient percentages should be, you can still work to balance your blood sugar. And you don't even have to track macros for this. You All you do is you go, all right, I'm going to eat breakfast. What's my protein source? Is it eggs? Is it Greek yogurt? Is it a protein shake? Okay, now I'm going to eat lunch. What's my protein source going to be? Is it going to be chicken? Is it going to be steak? Is it going to be pork? Okay, now I'm eating dinner. What's my what's my protein source going to be? Is it fish? Is it um, turkey? Whatever. Um, now I'm having I'm having my snacks. Where what's my protein in my snack? Is it um, hard boiled eggs? Is it cottage cheese? Is it Greek yogurt? Is, and so, and then making sure that that's sufficient. So it's not just one hard boiled egg because that's only, I think about seven grams of protein. Having a couple, you know, doing maybe three hard boiled egg whites and then one hard boiled egg. Um, not just having 
two or three ounces of deli turkey on a sandwich, having six ounces of deli turkey on a sandwich. And remember, when you cook protein so you can weigh your protein and let's say you've weighed out four ounces and then you cook it well it's going to lose about 25 percent moisture so now you're actually only eating three ounces of protein so you need to take that into consideration too um but every single time you eat making sure that you have a sufficient amount of protein will help you Balance your blood sugar, which is ultimately if your if your insulin levels are up, you're storing. So you're you're storing fat. So we want to keep blood sugar levels just as balanced as possible. Eating protein will help you do that. Back when I first lost, there's this 13 years ago, 14 years ago when I lost fat, I did it by balancing my blood sugar always having protein, a sufficient amount of protein every single time you eat. That's also going to help you not have cravings and it's going to help you stay fuller longer because it takes your body longer to digest that protein. So now we are talking about a calorie deficit, making sure that we have high quality calories and balancing our blood sugar while we're doing it. Those are the three things that I did that if you want to lose fat, those are the three things that you absolutely have to do. Then um, let's talk a little bit about workouts. So my workout, my workouts didn't change. Um, I strength train about three to four times a week. Um, I have my, I have two to one one lower lower day one upper upper day and then one day that it's a little bit of upper and lower a little bit more lower but sometimes i have to break those up um and it ends up taking me four four sessions to do it um, because they can be a bit longer so um strength training three to four times a week um going to crossfit and doing class for my conditioning um doing that about three times a week going to yoga once a week that's it. That did not change. That's what I was doing before. It's what I still do now. Um, in fact, I probably at some point was doing four days of CrossFit and now it's down to two or three um, just because my schedule is a little bit more hectic. Um, I am pretty active during my days though as a, you know, personal training clients, you know, that's, activity, walking my dog. Um, no other intentional walking because, well, now that it's cooler out, um, I'll be doing more of that, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so getting your knee up is, can be really, really, really helpful. Um, so knee is non act, non exercise activity thermogenesis. So basically like if you're sitting at your desk, you know, and you're just like knocking your knees, like you're fidgeting, um, that kind of stuff, getting up um, every hour on the hour and just kind of like stretching and moving. Um, if you're confined to a desk all day, that can be really helpful. Um, just moving your body around. Um, like I know for me on Saturdays and Sundays, my knee is way up because I'm not at my desk at all. I'm cleaning my apartment, I'm doing a ton of laundry, I'm meal prepping, I'm, you know, walking to the places that we're going. I'm just constantly, constantly moving. So getting your knee up can be really helpful too. But then somebody actually asked me how my workouts were impacted by the 10 pound weight loss. Oh yeah. And by the way, the only reason that I even know that I lost 10 pounds was because, um, I did a pull up and I had, uh, I had weight attached to me and I wanted to know what percentage of my body weight that was. So I weighed myself. I did a pull up with, uh, like a under, it was a chin up. No, sorry. Neutral grip chin up, um, with 53 pounds attached to me. So I wanted to know what percentage of my body weight that was. So I weighed myself and that's when I, I found out that I went from 135 to 125. Um, but it was never about weight. 
it was always just about like feeling more comfortable and looking good. And let me tell you, I'm very happy with the results. I feel amazing. Um, but somebody asked me how that impacted my workouts. And I honestly thought that it was going to have a major impact on them, but it really didn't like not even my strength. I actually PR'd my back squat in the middle of this, but it's not entirely fair because I think that prior to this, I was kind of overdoing it. I was, you know, I mean, I was traveling a whole bunch and then coming home and then trying to like hit it hard because like I didn't really feel great, you know, after like eating and drinking everything I did. So I think that I was, I think that I was kind of overdoing it. I was kind of stressing my body out a little bit prior to going into this calorie deficit, um, just by doing so many workouts and training really, really hard and, um, you know, just travel in and of itself takes, takes energy. And, you know, I wasn't eating nutrient dense food when not, I shouldn't say I wasn't, but I wasn't eating as much nutrient dense food. So those, see, those things kind of canceled each other out, um, which is kind of cool. Um, my conditioning at CrossFit has probably gotten a little bit better because I, I have less weight to move around. Um, but I haven't really done too many workouts that have like a heavy barbell in them. Um, I would venture to guess that I'm, I'm probably about the same because honestly, moving around heavy barbells in a CrossFit workout has never been a huge strong suit for me. Um, I'm not bad at it, but it's just my body. I was, I mean, I was doing weightlifting. I was doing Olympic weightlifting from 2020 through 2022. And then at the, in December of 2022, I went to worlds. And then after that, I switched over and my workouts have been geared towards powerlifting. So I was going to do a powerlifting meet this year. Um, but I, ultimately decided not to because I just don't feel like it. But um 20 yeah for for two two whole years I was doing Olympic weightlifting and my body does not like that. Um so like my shoulder would always feel like crap and my hips just that bringing that heavy barbell down. It's such a dynamic, um, and such a dynamic movement and in such like speed and velocity. It just was constantly crashing down on me and I didn't feel very good. So having cut that out too, and just getting back into, you know, doing either a back squat or a deadlift and then accessory work that coincides with that or bench press or overhead press, and then accessory work that coincides with that, my body feels so much better. So I'm recovering better, and therefore my workouts have not suffered, which is amazing. Anyway, um, that is it. I don't think that there's anything else that um, I really want to share, but I will say if you need help doing this, because, you know, it can get this isn't what you do. This isn't like, this is not your area of expertise and asking for support and asking for help in doing this can be, it can make or break you. And so, and even if you feel like, you know, I think I got this, like having that second set of eyes or having that person that can be there for you that just says like, Hey, you know, you are, you're doing this. Um, just stick with it can be so helpful in keeping you going. And then, you know, having like, I even had to reach out to my friend and say like, Hey, I'm fucking, starving. I shouldn't say that on YouTube <laughs> or a podcast. I'm freaking starving. Um, what do I do? You know, I had to ask my friend, she was my second set of eyes. She was my sounding board for that. So, you know, having that is invaluable in your journey. So, um, that is why I do what I do and I offer what I offer. So if this is something that you want to explore and do, 
reach out to me and I'm happy to help you. Anyway, um, that is it. If you have any questions about this stuff, you can always reach out to me, Kira at KiraWilliamsFitness.com, and um, I'm happy to chat with you about it. I hope that helps you in your journey. <laughs>